All right, welcome to Typology Gifts. This is Dan. With us today is Serena. Nice to meet you, Serena. Nice to meet you. Happy to be here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, me too, actually. So, uh, so for the benefit of those who have never seen my channel before, uh, I can never assume that you, that uh, this isn't the first video you might be seeing. Um, what I tend, to, what I do here is like um, offer an opinion to people who want to want want my opinion of what I think their type is, um, and and then we talk about it. So it's never um, it's never an attempt to um, kind of box you in into something, but more like uh, give you an uh, an external observer uh, who can who can give you some thoughts, and then um, maybe it'll help you uh, on your journey as you as you continue to figure out who you are, which I do, I'm still doing too. So, <laughs> um, so hopefully it's a, hopefully it's a, it's a constructive, um, helpful, uh, kind of thing. And, um, and, and just a, like a collaborative thing. So, so we'll just, we'll, we'll do it together. How's that sound? <laughs> Sounds great. Okay. Normally, when you want to figure out your personality, it's hard to find someone to discuss it with you because it's kind of personal to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Right. It's your it's your own unique personality. <laughs> yeah. So okay, but but um, you know, as, as goes with this, um. There, there are certain there are certain generalities that um, that are kind of observable that some people have noticed. You can be a right-handed person or a left-handed person, and somebody could mm -hmm. be observing you and notice something, some things about you, and and draw a conclusion that you might be right-handed or left-handed, uh, or or have some other kind of preference. So that's that's really all I'm trying to do through the questions I'll ask you, which is just to um, to listen to how you formulate your thoughts and, and, um, try to see if anything jumps out at me as what I think is, might be certain kinds of preferences that you have, and that will maybe help, uh, guide us in the th certain direction. So I tend to ask a lot of follow-up questions too, so expect, expect follow-up questions, um, okay. because I don't know what I'm going to find, you know, so, mm -hmm. so I like to go just wherever wherever we go um your subconscious will lead me where we where we should go <laughs> <laughs> um so uh the first question i like to ask people is um on the on this on on the, on the range of like reactiveness to proactiveness where where do you th if 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 one side of it was um entirely reactive people and the other side of it was entirely proactive people where do you fall on that um spectrum of proactiveness mm. often time i would think i'm more of a reserved type of person because mm -hmm. i'm kind of passive and introverted mm -hmm. and even though there are lots of things that would want to change me normally i just be like um I'm just gonna be me, mm -hmm. so I don't think a lot of time I would like to react to certain things. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're more proactive, is what you're saying. Yeah. And could you give me some examples of life that you're proactive in? Um. For example, when I went to the activity, uh, often time people would tell me that I'm too introverted mm -hmm. but sometimes i would be like i could be myself and you could be you and you could try all the best uh, try all uh, your best to be extroverted but mm -hmm. you have no right to judge me just because i don't function the same way as you do mm -hmm. and so sometimes i just felt so provoked and i just don't want to communicate with them anymore that is most case scenario, but sometimes when when I'm in the mood, of course I could be like a little bit reactive, mm -hmm. but that could only happen in some intimate relationship type of scenario. 
for example, like with my parents, because when you engage in intimate relationship, oftentimes they strike the most, strike the um, very harshly. Mm -hmm. So it could make you feel a little bit out of control sometimes, especially when you couldn't really communicate with them, for example, like your parents. Yeah, and sometimes some arguments could emerge from the conversation. So, and I would become so affected by the environment and my parents' opinions, which I not necessarily agree with, but I couldn't change them, but they are so close to me and you couldn't choose your parents. So mm -hmm. that is the special case there. Yep. Okay. So it sounds like there's some, uh, so, so what you're looking for is um, a sense of uh, safety to be able to be reactive. Otherwise the default is like proactive. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's proactive. It's, it's thinking ahead and, probably predicting things and things like that right I, that a, a lot uh, when you think uh, when you talk about predicting things there's quite an interesting thing when i was in kindergarten i i tried to throw away all my classmates eraser to the garden mm -hmm. because i just want to see how people would behave when they don't have eraser anymore <laughs> and when and when the teacher asked who throw or who throw away all the eraser i just be so honest and i just raise my hand and be like is this me miss i just want to see what happened <laughs> did you get in trouble and i felt like it's so interesting no my um my teacher actually really appreciates me and she'd be like oh you actually think oh you're so interesting <laughs> that's pretty funny yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, would you say that you are um, a curious person? A lot, actually. I'm curious to a lot of different topics. Um, um, my hobbies, actually, the range is quite huge. Mm -hmm. For example, like, even though I look kind of like an indoor person, mm -hmm. oftentimes I would like to go hiking. I would go swimming and a lot of outdoor activity. I just really enjoy it. For, I think it's kind of like the SE side of me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was little, I was really active in the school activity. For example, every school activity possible, you would see me in there. Like the choir uh, and the athlete team, mm -hmm. and a lot of lots of different hobbies, group, and I would be in there because I'm so curious about every subject possible, mm -hmm. and I would like to know more about everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like when I went into my teenage state, suddenly there's a huge wave of emotion and unsolved problem in my life mm -hmm. and so i just suddenly become so emo all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> and did you did was it was it upsetting to feel a loss of control somehow like is, is that what the deal was that you didn't like these, yeah at that time changes? i was like the darkest place possible mm -hmm. like because uh i think i default my my default is like I'm not an extroverted person, mm -hmm. and I think it felt kind of out of the place most of the time because the world is function in an extroverted way, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everybody would force you to speak out and mm -hmm. talk about your feeling and such. And I'm be like, I don't feel comfortable talking about my feeling. Right. Sometimes people people would uh, come up and talk with you and speak as if she wants to pity you or something. Mm -hmm. uh, some people would feel like, oh, you care about me. I felt so uh, at ease. And, but I feel like, how am I supposed to respond to that? And I'm going to run a program in my brain thinking about uh, the, proper, uh, the proper response to the uh -huh. situation. Uh -huh. It only makes me feel more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So That's about it. do you think that um, 
So do you think you you're you're understanding um, other people better than they're understanding you? Often time that is the case, because a lot of people don't focus to their own personal behavior. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just ob absorb uh, absorb everything in their environment possible. For example, like the mainstream trend mm -hmm. and the hottest topic. And they don't really have their preferences and their own values. They just like a group of hive mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's kind of predictable sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I would have a set of uh, formulated um, behavior towards those who I know how they would behave. So I don't get into trouble or like don't waste a lot of energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you you a um would you consider yourself a conservationist of energy within yourself like are you always attempting to uh expend the least amount of energy physically? I don't think it's the letter. You don't think what? Mm, I think I um. I don't want to. Ex I'm I'm not an explosive person mm -hmm. necessarily. Mm -hmm. So, because I I like to have a lot of alone time mm -hmm. and save my energy. Everything that I do is to make me spend less energy mm -hmm. uh, in the outside world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Why do you think you do that? Because I spend a lot of time and energy toward inward. Because mm -hmm. I would think a lot and mm -hmm. I like to discover different theory and different things that could make me engage my thought process. Mm -hmm. And that is what makes me truly happy hmm. in a weird kind of sense yes generally speaking and do you think that that's an unusual that's do you think that do you think that do you run into many people who have that same point of view not really it's not a it's not a very popular type of personality necessarily because mm -hmm. if it is then I would feel a lot more comfortable nowadays <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, what's your relationship with authority if the authority is capable of course I would trust him but he or she or they mm -hmm. is not really a person that I could trust, then I wouldn't. Because authority to me is not like a huge blob of person, a huge group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on different situation. For example, like one time, because uh, I was kind of in a dark place and my parents told me to go to see some psychiatrist mm -hmm. but I don't really appreciate his approach to to my situation mm -hmm. and my thought process so I just stop mm -hmm. seeing him mm -hmm. anymore yeah so you have a very um, strong uh, internal um let's say um resistance to you you're you have a strong um gate as to what you or you will let in to your thought process yes indeed i'm a very private person not only socially but also mentally mm -hmm. mm. Hmm. okay well, it's not very often that I feel that I am so um, 
early convinced of somebody's type. Um, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess I could probably just. I but see, I don't want to shortchange you because I don't want to make you feel like, oh, well, uh, is it that obvious? Um, so let me let me ask you some other questions actually. That I think um, it's because I'm quite young. Because when when a person is quite young, it's kind of easier to figure out their type because they're. Not yet a lot of social uh -huh. concepts sinking in their mind. I would feel like that. That's your theory, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, so I, I think the thing I've observed is that um, types uh, go through periods uh, in in life and, and sort of like, you know, an INFP will act this way in childhood a lot of times and then mm. this way in adulthood and this way in old age. And ISTJ will, you know, so similar, like, it's yeah. not, it's not always the same across the board, but like, um, um, I, I don't know. I don't know if I've if if it's easy if it's easier to type somebody who's younger or older. I'd have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to you. Because people always always said children are kind of pure in in that kind of sense. Sure. So they feel more comfortable exposing their true self because they mm -hmm. haven't beat down by the world yet. <laughs> sure. They will. <laughs> 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 So, so what do you think the universe is? Let me ask you a large, a big question. What do you think the universe is? The universe? Well, that that is that is a huge question. Uh, physically speaking, universe is um, produced due to the big boom theory mm -hmm. a lot of times ago. Uh, but universe could also be a concept that the person's mental reach, that a person's imagination's range, mm -hmm. and that is his, his universe. Mm -hmm. And everybody's universe could, could be different because people have different belief for example like one person uh who felt like the universe is made out of something but it's hard to prove that but it is his universe so i think uh it's different for different person it might uh, lost translations because it's apparent that my mother language is not english mm -hmm. so Sometimes it's hard for me to formulate some mm. kind of logical sentences. Do you think more in yeah. one, one language or another, or do you think in different languages depending on situation? Mm. Depends on different situation. Because I personally was very fond of learning language. Mm -hmm. uh, I originally know Cantonese and Mandarin. Mm -hmm. And I I learned English, and I'm currently learning Japanese and uh, and then German, and then I have a list of the language that I like to learn in order, because hmm. I find it funny, to you know interesting to get in touch with others' language, because because language is kind of like the cultures. The cultures uh, itself, you could see a lot of things in their language, mm -hmm. and I, I am kind of a language per person because mm -hmm. I could catch the feelings quite easily. For example, like when I was singing, uh, my my friends could often time tell the emotion and the feelings of the song very easily. Mm -hmm. One of my friends couldn't couldn't do the same effect but i could you know the the feelings mm -hmm. of the language i could capture it quite easily mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and okay. i do feel more comfortable speaking in fact when i was in school uh because a, lang a language test have different type of tests oftentimes speaking is the highest 
uh, highest point. Yeah, I have the highest score in speaking. Interesting. No matter it's Chinese or English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's kind of like a uh, ability of myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you think um, when so so na ling language naturally comes to you? What about um, other what about other creative pursuits? What about writing or um, art or making music things like that? Uh, wh wh where do your skills kind of uh, spread out there across those things? Uh, I try drawing once, but I find <laughs> out that I'm not much of a drawing person. Mm -hmm. uh, but I find myself kind of good at musical stuff. Mm -hmm. I really love musical. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but when I listen to musical, it's as if I could grasp their emotion, and then I just get so hyped up by their song. And it felt so good. And um, also, I'm often time I would do some voice acting because I find it very interesting to emulate emotion into voice. Hmm. It's like a for formation. It's like a mathematic formation, but you could actually do some effects mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you could notice. Hmm. Yeah. Because normally my voice might scream TE sometimes, especially when I was speaking in other language. Mm -hmm. And it would sound so rough and not a very feminine voice. But sometimes I could change it. I just don't like to make it so feminine because I'm not that type of person. Now, one thing I, I, I remember reading somewhere, but I don't know if it's, I don't know if this is legitimate, but now you can maybe you can help give me some information about this whether whether you think this is true i've read something that to the effect that your personality changes when you uh, learn a different language that you actually use a just slightly different personality to to use that language do you think that that's valid do you think that's something that you've experienced yeah actually it totally works on me like i actually sounds more easygoing in english uh-huh I, but do you, think I, it, uh, do you think it affects mm -hmm. your personality more than just how you sound? But like, also, do you think that you think a certain way in one language and think a different way in a different language? Because different different language has their own internal process when they speak. Because mm -hmm. when you see their uh, notice their grammar and different details, you would realize that a language has its own characteristic mm -hmm. and when you use different language it would engage you into different hmm. uh, type of personality mm. so when you use different language you would prone to interact with the language with its own huh. uh, characteristic and so it provoke you to uh, interact with the world in a different kind of sense but it doesn't necessarily change your personality because mm -hmm. personality is kind of like a huge range. You just yeah. pick the right. the part that is closest to the language. Right, right. If you're, I it suppose, does change I suppose, the feeling of... Mm -hmm. it's, uh, sorry, continue. It does change the feeling of what? Of the person who listened to you. Mm. Yeah. Kind of like that. Interesting. You've given me a lot to think about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're we're um, almost at the halfway mark. Um, let me let me ask you one more question before the break. Um, how? Uh, which areas of your life do you feel like you you have a good a good handle of organization on, and which areas do you think you are less organized in? I think I genuinely think I am a very organized people, no matter from which perspective. Mm -hmm. Across the board, like there's no disorganization anywhere. Um, there's one tiny distortion about my schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to have a little schedule book to drop down my 
different activity. But recently, when I got so busy, I just don't use it anymore,、mm-hmm. and everything is dropped down in my phone. But sometimes I got so busy, and I just so、uh, bombed out by the、uh, environment and different situation.、Mm-hmm. And sometimes I just got become so busy, and I don't have time for myself. I would find the schedule like this is so unorganized, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it makes me kind of frustrated. And my room would be organized like a few weeks a time. Uh, it's not necessarily very organized all the time, but when it becomes so messy to the point that I couldn't handle it anymore, I was just uh decided to have a huge clean out and、mm-hmm. organize everything back to its place. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I would feel kind of、uh, a sense of organized because when you're organized environment, you kind of organizing yourself because、mm-hmm. you are the result of the environment. So I would feel better after that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you handle、um, when? Others in your life、uh, cause some di- level of disorganization for you. Well, if I could help that person,、uh, if I really care about the person and he or she is worthy of the help,、mm-hmm. I would do my best to try to. Tell her how to tell her, or like subconsciously sending the message of how to be more organized,、mm-hmm. in a sense of kind of leading that person, but not very obviously and、mm-hmm. obnoxiously.、Mm-hmm. For example, like my my mom is kind of like a very empty kind of person, but she would felt so unfulfilling in life. Mm-hmm. And I would feel like, well, if she felt so unfulfilling, but she kind of likes cooking, but she never tried new things,、mm-hmm. maybe she would felt happier after she tried different type of、uh, cuisine、mm-hmm. and try to make them. So I would try to subconsciously tell her that, oh, you,、uh, my friend used to make some kind of buns and different type of dish. Why don't you try it? And then she tried to. Make it, and it tastes delicious, and everybody praised her, and she felt better. And it is that type of、uh, subconsciously、mm-hmm. helping her to get herself together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. I dig it. I dig it. Okay.、Yeah. All right. We're gonna call it the end of part A. I'm gonna go pour myself another drink. We're gonna come back for part B. Okay. And I think I'm gonna tell you what type、cool. I think you are at the, near the beginning of part B. And then we'll talk about、mm. it, and then we'll see where that conversation leads us. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right.